All right, I had a viewer on YouTube ask if I can walk through a receiver and talk about kind of what the what the components are, kind of anatomically what's inside of a receiver. Um, this is a Technics SA700 from the 70s, and some receivers have parts that are broken out into separate boards. This one's a little bit more consolidated, but I'm going to walk through and tell you what you would expect inside of a, a typical stereo receiver. First of all, you're going to have a transformer. Um, and the more wattage, the larger your transformer is going to be. This is like a traditional wire wound. Sometimes you get what's called a toroidal, which is like a circular type transformer. Um, the circular ones apparently can put out some, some higher current but in general it really all depends what your amplifier is spec for and what they did down here next to the the transformer is typically going to be your power supply so this whole circuit back here is a combination of power supply and it's also the protection circuit there's a relay right here usually most amps are going to have a relay and that's going to be what clicks on and off when you first turn it on and you have these very large capacitors okay um, these provide energy reserves, so when you turn the power up and you have lots of base, your system can keep up with it and it doesn't get starved power-wise. And the more watts your receiver are, the bigger you're going to have some of these tall cans or capacitors in your unit. Lower wattage units will be maybe half the size of this. This is 100 watts per channel, so I would expect to see something around that size. But in here, we have a combination of the speaker circuit and then the amp, I'm sorry, and then the power supply. And the power supply is gonna give off a number of different rails. Like this one, I believe, gives off like a 31 or a 39 volt rail. There's also a 12 volt rail. And depending on where the power is needed throughout the unit, it's either gonna tap off of that or, or the other rail. Um, and it's going to feed back. So this is designed to power the whole amp. Your light bulbs and things like that and some of the other circuits are going to use the lower rail, but your amp and other things are going to use usually something higher. So there's a couple voltage points that come off of your, uh, of your power supply. And you'll notice that there's fuses. Usually the power supply has one or more fuses. And then sometimes you have fuses that um, are connected to the individual rails. So if you do short a bulb out, the fuse goes out versus breaking apart. And as things became cheaper, as receivers evolved, they got rid of a lot of those fuses. So what's nice is if you drop something or you make a mistake, chances are there's a fuse and there's some down below even there that you can replace. So it's very versatile and these things are, are a lot more bulletproof that way. These are the output transistors and right here each channel has a total of four and there's two different types of transistors that you're going to see in a solid state circuit and they work together so we got basically two pair on for the left channel two pair for the right channel they look the same but this is where the power is coming from and these are the guys that actually are are going to create the 100 watts and they're going to pull from the power supply based on the audio given to it, and then that's where you need your, your capacitors as reserve power, and you have a, a, an overall transformer that keeps up with the unit. In here, we have a tuner, and this is uh, an analog tuner, and as such, it's gonna have one of these, it looks like a metal thing with a bunch of fins on it. It's like a basically a tuning capacitor, as it's called, and um, this is what gets uh, really great reception in these older receivers and the, and the larger that your tuner is the better it's going to be um, so this is actually a very good thing but you won't find this in anything modern today um, this particular board is the tuner board there's a lot of adjustments on the tuner board you got to have specialized equipment in order to get this to tune in correctly and to get the dial to work so you typically don't mess with this unless you really have to um, part of this board, and it's sectioned off here, which you can't see, is the Phono preamp board. And the reason why I know that is because I replaced a couple capacitors on here um, because I felt that the, the Phono was, was not working quite right. 
a um, little bit muddy. So that actually is integrated with the, with the tuner board, but it actually is separate, but it's sectioned off here. So as you read a service manual, you start to realize sometimes there's a board that does more things or it's just one thing, okay? Now it's hard to see down here, but in fact, it's not gonna come up at all, but down here is the tone board. You have a tone and a preamp board. So you have your inputs, your audio comes in, it's gonna flow through, and then you have your bass, your treble, your loudness, your volume. Your preamp and your tone board is typically going to typically going to be behind the knobs. Uh, I could get to it a little bit easier probably by taking the bottom off, but that's a whole section too. So when you're trying to diagnose a system and you're trying to see, you know, what is wrong or where do you have a problem, you know, if you're not getting really great fidelity, it could be your tone board. If you're not getting great power, but it sounds okay, you may have a starved power supply. If you're blowing a fuse, it means that there's something short-circuited or maybe one of your output transistors is bad. When these guys go bad, they short, they typically blow a fuse. So when you're doing any type of troubleshooting, you're gonna be going through a process of elimination to understand, do I even need to touch the tone board? Do I even need to touch the tuner? Do I even need to touch the power supply? Because depending on what's not working right, then you can focus in on one particular part. Um, and then when you check your voltages, if you're getting voltage and you're getting power from the amp and you get bright bulbs, chances are your power supply is actually putting out all the, the different rails. You may just have a problem somewhere else or, or, or something has to be looked into. So anyways, there's a lot of parts in a receiver um, when you open these up, Pioneers, um, from what I've seen, they have more separate boards. This one is a little bit more integrated. I'll do another video soon that, that talks through this stuff, but um, that's just kind of a walkthrough and also a little, a little talk through about what to look for or what to troubleshoot when you have a problem with an amp. I hope this was helpful, and in my style, it was kind of a, just a throw together here, so I, I, I hope you like this.